Okay, speaking of something else that's not unheard of, I've pissed somebody else off on Twitter, and this time I'm going to tap out on this one. <laughs> I'm going to say that I'm not good at because it, it, it makes me happy, and I'll explain why in a minute. It makes me happy for these people to know that I have great disdain for them. <laughs> but at the same time, they get so fucking worked up that it's impossible to read my fucking Twitter, right? Clogging up the timeline, which is what the, one of the idiots that was involved accused me of doing to his. But my fans actually spell words properly and have some sense. But anyway, it was late, late last week, and uh, I'm scrolling through the thing, and normally if somebody – tweets me hey jim what do you think about this you got to see this you're going to hate this i'm not going to watch that because i know i'm going to hate it right but it was one of those things where when you scrolled past the the tweet it just the video started moving right and it caught my attention some dumb fuck in a ring in japan you know it's japan because everybody's japanese and the writing's in japanese that's a pretty good clue He's got one of the inflatable sex dolls on his back. Imagine this, that he's got like its legs are over his shoulders and the doll is on his back, right? Maybe a reverse 69. Maybe it's a 96 or so. I don't know. But guess what he's doing, Brian? He's wrestling the blow-up doll. No. He's got it on his back and he's just repeatedly over and over backflipping onto his own head bouncing up and doing it again about eight or ten times around the ring in a row like the doll is the blow-up doll is giving him a bunch of canadian destroyers so he's not even wrestling it he's just jumping up and down back flipping onto his head and fucking getting up and doing it again so naturally and and i wasn't sure who it was because i've heard this fucking kota ibushi character has done the doll shit too but i don't know how many people have done the doll shit over there i know it's some japanese and plus he's got the doll legs wrapped around his head so i can't really get a good shot so i just tweeted would somebody please tell me who this dumb fuck is so that i can fucking tell him to fuck off too for being a piece of shit and I, you know, I think I asked Meltzer, I like Bueller, anybody, who's this? And, of course, it comes back, it is indeed the aforementioned Kota Ibushi, who I've managed to avoid till, till this point in time, but is, is also the greatest wrestler in the world, along with Kenny Omega, who's the greatest wrestler in the world, and the Young Bucks, who's the greatest wrestler in the world, and all that. So, anyway, I, I tried to find Kota Ibushi's Twitter. Well, I didn't try to find it. I basically, I did the at thing and wrote Kota Ibushi, and there was 27 fucking people, I guess Japanese, with some variation of Kota or Ibushi in their name, or some of them may not even be Japanese. They're fan accounts. So I didn't know which one was him, so I knew he'd be, I knew he's friends with Omega. And I guess all the doll wrestlers stick together. So I've tagged (laughs) Omega uh, to say, hey, can somebody please tell this fucking guy that I think he's a fucking piece of shit too? And I said, fuck you, you know, Kenny Omega, thank you, because fuck this fucking guy, right? And so then that's when it backfired because they do have a bunch of people that like whatever it is that they do, and I admit that, and that's another reason why I don't like to be around most wrestling shows these days. But it's just it's so ironic, and I thought we'd ask a couple of questions. Because here's the thing. I used to say horrible things about the Rock and Roll Express, but I didn't mean them. I was working. But the people still took the business as a shoot, so they believed them. And teenage girls, especially, sent me death threats written in crayon, many of which I've reproduced, right? Now, 30 years later, I say horrible things about these comedy bullshit play wrestlers and their blow-up dolls and shit, and I mean every word of it. And people know the business is a work, but now it's grown adult males that are losing their shit at me on Twitter. And it's the Twitter version of a crayon death threat. You, you motherfucker, you're just mad because you're irrelevant, you're old, and, and you like 20-minute headlocks and back in the old days. And it's like they it, – it's the same thing as these Trump defenders. They don't see what's going on in front of them. They can't see that it's stupid for a human being to just backflip over and over on his head by himself. But I thought we'd ask a, a couple of questions here just out loud because who is to blame – for for this whole thing, for what's allowed to be done on wrestling shows these days, for what some of these fans think there's there's no problem with. Well, everybody knows it's fake. Exactly, because of shit like this, for one thing. But everybody knows it's fake, so why? it's just entertainment. Why would you care? One guy, 
actually said, well, they, they defend it's a comedy promote. You don't understand, Cornette. It's a comedy promotion over there. So it's okay because it's a comedy promotion. This was done where it's 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 legal to you know sell children to be used as food for the wolves. Uh, it's 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 legal in that county, so there's no problem with it. Or w- one idiot said it it shows how great a wrestler this Ibushi is because he had a great match and psychology with the doll. He had a great match and great psychology with that blow up doll that he wrestled in the ring. Or, or and they will defend it. Well, they did that a long time ago, but you know before they before they became the greatest wrestlers in the world, and that's what the well. If they yeah. did that a long time ago, then fuck them a long time ago, because they shouldn't have got a chance to be the greatest wrestlers in the world, which they're not, because they fucking committed a goddamn crime against nature, against the fucking wrestling business, and they should have been fucking sodomized with a rusty fishing knife. So, but who's to blame? Is it the wrestlers? Is it the fans? Is it the promoters? Is it video games? I have a feeling video games is actually more to blame for what's going on in wrestling these days than for all the kids getting shot in school. Because these wrestlers do actually think they're fucking characters in these fucking video games. But I'm, I'm, I, I want to blame the fans who like this shit because it's just stupid for grown people. To, to, to think that it's funny for the fucking invisible man to come in or the goddamn, you know, invisible hand grenade or the guy to flip people with his dick. It's stupid to grown people would think that's good in any event, but especially if they're wrestling fans. Because the wrestling fans, when I was a fan, protected the business. And they they tried to talk people out of shit they heard if there was an expose in the newspaper or they tried to fucking rally against people who poo-pooed wrestling as bullshit and fake because they knew at some level that the more people believed in wrestling and the more people went to wrestling and the more people watched wrestling on TV, the better wrestling they'd see because it'd be more successful. Do you Are you even old enough to remember when the fans used to kind of try to protect the business against people who were knocking it? Kind of, yeah, where, you know, if there was a section of fans who were shitting on it, you would hear other fans say, hey, you're ruining it for us. Shut up. But I mean, you know, you a lot of times in our day, people who didn't like wrestling, you would try to fucking argue with them, right? You would try to represent if you'd say what the wrestlers would say if they were there, right? You you took up for the business. Now the fans are the ones going, well, it's supposed to be stupid and silly. Nobody take it seriously because it's fake. And it's just so fucking annoying. But is it their fault or is because they are not old enough, most of them, to have ever seen this shit done the right way? and know how it was taken and presented. Is it the wrestler's fault because the wrestler, their favorite wrestlers tell them that it's okay to think that that fucking inexorable, inexorable cretin, Joey Ryan again tweeted, well, I saw one of the wrestlers in the fucking movie and he had an intergender fight scene. So apparently the WWE doesn't have problem with fight scenes in movies, but it just in fake wrestling. Yes, fake wrestling, the shit that you do, you fake human being, you fake fuck with your fake dick and your fucking smeared and pubic hair, fuck you. I have disgust for you and the people who do that type of shit because all the fucking years that so many people have spent in this business, and you come along and wipe your fucking feet on it. I hope he chokes on his fucking dick spot. But anyway, their favorite wrestlers are telling them it's okay to think this way, so is it the fans' fault? Because I try to hate these fans, but maybe it's not their fault. Maybe they haven't got so stupid that they want to see a guy and a blow-up doll doing flips or the Invisible Man or whatever the fuck. It's just because their favorite wrestlers tell them it's okay. And that's what it's supposed to And it's art. And we're expressing our art when a 120-pound woman goes 15 minutes competitively with a 250-pound man and shows everybody how easy this shit is to do when nobody sells anything or they take the same bumps over and over or they set each other on fire. Well, that's not easy to do. Or is it the promoter's fault? Is it because the promoters these days are often goofs too? And the first time that that guys did these slow-mo high spots or whatever on shows, they didn't get disciplined or fired or slapped around like they would have. At, at, what do you think? Who has the chicken? What, what, which is the chicken and which is the egg? What started this where this was viewed to be okay? Because the, the people 
didn't just say, hey, we want to see people wrestling the Invisible Man. Somebody had to do it first, right? Or is it the promoter's fault for starting to put up with it? What the fuck? Just because it'll sell a few tickets to these fucking these cretins in a fucking rec center somewhere, we have to be permanently exiled as a goddamn you know, joke bit in between the plate spinner and the fucking talking dog on the Ed Sullivan show. I think a large part of it goes into the discussion about the changing demographics of wrestling fans. Basically everybody that fucking wanted to take it seriously has long since been run off. So now we're just left with this subset. That's going to fucking watch the, the dog and pony show is what you're saying. I mean, there's a certain style that appeals to a certain fan. I mean, I don't know if, if those matches with, let's say, you know, any of the ones you're talking about with an inanimate object, I don't think those appeal to the average family that are going to a wrestling show or any old people that are going to a wrestling show. It's one fan. It's a 20 something year old white guy in a t shirt to 40 something year old white guy in a t shirt. But one, I, I want to set one thing straight, though. Also, one article uh, the guy sent me a link to said, well, what do you think of this? Uh, they said you said this. The article on somebody's website said that I was critical of Omega and these guys because of their high spot centric style. And that's why that I'm just all like they're doing too many goddamn super kicks. So I'm going to wish them boiled in oil and I think they should all die. I don't know how much plainer I can make this. Does anybody listen anymore? Does anybody understand the English language? I don't care if they want to paralyze themselves, taking goofy bumps and doing too much shit. It makes it harder for everybody else, but I'm not in that business anymore. So I don't care. Let them all take bumps and just bump themselves until they're all black and blue uh, and paralyzed and have fucking bones sticking out and shit. Let them do all the fucking goofy bumps. Don't sell anything. That's fine. But when you come to the the slow motion kung fu routines and the the men against the women and kids and the blow up dolls and the invisible man and mocking the business that you're in so you can make a dollar uh, because you're you're substandard in the talent that's required for this or you don't have the mental capability to have the discipline to realize that you've been allowed into something that you should respect like an Omega who has great talent you know athletically I'd love to like his wrestling. I've watched it. I don't even like it really that much if he, for reasons I've said here, if he hadn't wrestled a doll and a kid. But fuck him. He's disqualified. Uh, if you're mocking the business so you can make a dollar and and just shit fuck everybody with real talent that could do it the right way, fuck you. I don't care how many fans you got. You got a bunch of fans, but I ain't one of them. And I ain't going to be. They disgust me that they're allowed to get away with this shit and that they're convinced that they've convinced this many people that all wrestling is a joke to be laughed at. And yes, it doesn't happen on a mainstream basis with the WWE. So now we're talking about the WWE being the more serious promotion because at least they don't have the invisible man. And people wonder why I don't want to have anything to do with this shit anymore. I'm embarrassed. It's like I'm in, I'm embarrassed of this country because we have a fucking idiot in the White House that we're responsible for electing. And I'm embarrassed I have to ask before I appear on anything re related to a wrestling show, is it going to be a wrestling show or are you going to have fucking phony shit and goddamn intergender bullshit and fucking fake hand grenades? I have to ask first. So, and if we have this Ibushi and this Omega who did this years ago, because I'm just seeing it now in this country over the past few years, if we have them to thank for starting this shit, then fuck them. I wish that God, the giant Baba would have still been alive so he could have called the fucking Yakuza to cut the fingers off of or take care of whoever operates this fucking DDT business. Because if, if Baba was still alive, we might not have had to suffer through all this shit. People may not look at us like we're the fucking idiot that runs the Ferris wheel at the county fair in the wrestling business because of goddamn stupid people doing stupid shit like that and setting themselves on fire and fucking diving off the roof. What do you, th what do you think that Gi – what would – how would you present that news to Giant Baba? Baba, there's a new wrestling promotion that's opened up here in our fine country of Japan – that features guys wrestling competitive matches with, with nine-year-old girls and inflatable blow-up dolls. How would that news have been delivered? I never thought of it in that context, the idea that Baba died in, what, 99? Yeah. Like, imagine if he had been alive to see just... not a, It would have killed, yeah. killed him. It would have killed him. 
I mean, in, in Noki's, uh, you know, a nut and I guess a multimillionaire. And I don't know if he would have been wounded, but that would it would have killed Giant Baba. If he had still been alive, it would have killed him to see in his country. I know he, I know he would have done something. They would not have been. A, can somebody that's an expert on Japanese wrestling, I want them to tell me that if Giant Baba was alive, that he would have fucking somehow or another put the kibosh on these people. Paging Fumi Saito, get in touch with the show. I can't, I wish they would, because I can't imagine that that would have, and as much pull and as importance and as much as a legend as Baba was, and he had network television and et cetera, et cetera, certainly to God, that he would have been able to do that. And I think that would have been too far. I mean, Onita was around with the hardcore stuff, but that would have been too much for Baba, I think. Even Anoki, Anoki's whole career was built on him trying to establish himself as the toughest athlete in Japan or in the world. He yeah. wasn't just fighting wrestlers. He was fighting anyone he can get in there, trying to establish their reputation. Gets involved with MMA years later, and now this is his wrestling business. Good Lord. How much of this do you think is, is directly on the shoulders of the WWF in the 80s and 90s loosening everything up, you know, clearly, in terms of things that are just silly on TV? Well, like a that? lot. I mean, a lot. You know, they definitely these they kids started, grew up watching that. That's the that's the thing. Well, they started down that path, but think of it when the the kids now should have grown up actually with fucking Austin and right well, no, twenty years, thirty they they actually they grew up after the, all the shit went to hell. They grew up after the attitude era when everything was out, everything was killed, nothing meant anything anymore, and nobody believed shit. And here and here's the internet to fucking prove it. So No, but if you're thirty years old, you're, when you're six years old, the Undertaker dies and floats to the ceiling. And, you know, well, when, when you yeah, think about wrestling but, fans, it's really what you walk away with from when you first discover it, those first few years, those always stay with you. So imagine if that's the world of wrestling you're being initiated into. Yeah, and it, it's just been more opened and more opened until finally now that even the boys in it, I, I, they, I'm not going to call them the boys. Even the, uh, They're not the boys. They'll never earn the right to be the boys. But the guys in the wrestling business now think that it's okay to present it like that, to talk about it like that, to tweet about it. Well, it's fake wrestling and you're a wrestler. You fucking, I just, I am disgusted by his existence. Just disgusted by him. But that's, you know, so, and, and then the fans ain't going to think anything wrong. If the wrestlers don't think anything wrong and the promoters fucking go along with it because they got to draw 500 people somewhere. And, and yes, and the all, all in just sold 10,000 tickets. Yes. Giant crowdfunding. I know that. But once again, every promoter of every outlaw show across the country allows some foolishness or other to go on and it all feeds on itself. And that's what the boys and the fans now think wrestling is. So, and some of these, you know, promoters have grown up being fans and they get some money somehow. And cause anybody can be a promoter now. You didn't just used to be able to, oh, I'll just start a territory over here. I did once, but <laughs> it, now anybody can be a promoter because you only have to run one show to be a fucking wrestling promoter. When you were promoting, how often did talent come to you with what would be considered a really bad idea? Because it seems like a lot well, of the talent's ideas are what gets on a lot of shows. So I'm wondering, 25 years ago, did talent come up to you with ideas that you'd have to shoot down? Well, yeah, but not the same kind of bad. It might be, no, we shouldn't do that for a finish or no, you know, that, let's not do that for a promo or whatever. Yeah, I've been pitched a lot of bad promos, but nobody, nobody that I ever worked with ever came up to me and pitched doing something with, once again, with blatant and obvious cooperation between the two people in the ring to drop any pretense of a, contest or a match or a fight or whatever and just do some silly hokey shit together with each other or against a, an invisible man or whatever i mean yeah, if, if nobody even even when if, if, if the dirty white boy and the dirty white girl were working a mixed tag deal with uh tammy and and brian lee there was never any thought that that the guys were going to go up for slams for these girls or feature them in spots where they were competitive it was worked like it should be for the personalities involved. And, and, and so some ideas would be bad, but nobody ever pitched to me. And, and by the time that I was in OVW, 
um, what well, you know, even if that generation was starting to think of goofy shit, they, they, they quickly learned from my memos and my lectures that we did not do goofy fucking sports entertainment, no VW. We were a professional wrestling promotion that did pro wrestling. And if I was finding guys, if they didn't kayfabe around town, because I didn't want them to shit on my business when they were gone, I was still had to be here. I certainly was not going to let them do goddamn spots with the invisible man. And then in Ring of Honor, obviously, that's, I guess that, you know, Steen wanted to super kick Veda Scott, the, you know, 90 pound female ring announcer just in a spot in the Manhattan Center because the people would pop. And I said, well, she's on TV next week without reconstructive surgery. So you can't. Well, what about if I just kick her in the chest instead of the face? You fucking idiot. You say you're going to Mark Marrow yourself. And when Sable power bombed Marrow, that was the end of his fucking career. You want to super kick a goddamn 90 pound girl ring announcer and we don't call the ambulance because it ain't in the budget. I would have been glad to let him super kick her on TV and, and send her to the hospital in an ambulance for reconstructive surgery to get the kick over to promote a goddamn match coming up later, but not as a stupid spot in a goddamn match. They've already paid to see they, the, the guys, it just got so off kilter as to what this business is versus what they fantasized it to be when they were watching it on TV. And then when they all got into business, they were just being let to do things. And it, there was nobody with 30 years of experience and strict control over everything that was presented as there was in every other company going back ages to filter out and weed out shit that, the, I mean, Jared, this is how sharp Jerry Jarrett was. One of the first entrance musics, entrance music, entrance songs that the Rock and Roll Express used was Rock and Roll is King, right? ELO. But Jarrett saw the video that they did to introduce that. And one of the phrases was, come along with me to a land of make believe. He said, nope. Randy West had to do a little mix, take that line out. He wasn't going to broadcast that on his fucking program. Subliminal. Every little impression is subliminal and multiple impressions over a long period of time form what you think about things. And the more you see, this is serious. This is blood and guts. This is fucking athletic. This is legitimate. This is something I should pay to see or take seriously. Or I like this guy. He's a fucking kick ass and whatever the fuck more impressions of that better, more impressions of, Oh, here comes the goddamn, you know, fucking plate spinner on Ed Sullivan and the cute little fucking trained chimpanzees and the invisible man, bad impressions. People aren't smart enough to figure that out because they, they want to make money for themselves. There's a lot of guys in history. I'll say this and we'll close up. There's a lot of guys in the history of the wrestling business that could have made a lot of money if they were allowed to do whatever the fuck they wanted to do whenever they wanted to do it. But because of the fact that other people had to be in the business and the business had to continue on there and in other places, they were not allowed to do those things. That's when smart people were running this fucking joint. Now that the goddamn inmates are running the asylum, this is what we get. That's why we got YouTube. That's why the cult of Cornette spends more time on YouTube than they do probably overall, I would think per head, at least from the ones I've spoken to watching anything produced now because at least they're not being insulted and the cult folks are a little bit more discriminating. I digress. That's it. You can always let somebody do anything they want to do and they can make money. But the question is, do you want them to make themselves money or do you want them to make you money while they make themselves money? If you're a promoter, you control what goes on on your show and in your universe and in your business. And all the promoters together universally agreed on the one thing. Don't make these fucking guys make our business look like a fucking joke. And when they stopped uh, agreeing to that basic principle and Vince headed us down that garden path, it's been shit ever since. Hey, what do you think about it? It's been shit ever since. I mean, I'm it's not saying there's not been any great wrestling in the last 30 years, but the the direction of the business and the, uh, the perception of the business amongst the guys and the fans has never been fucking less serious. And that's just the way it is. Bruce Hornsby in the range. That's the way it is. Some things will never change. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't have a comeback. I've, I've got to go away. Now you've made me grumpy, Brian. You've me? made me grumpy. I've, I'm in a bad mood. I'm going to go out in my yard and rake something. What did I do? You made me think and talk about all this stuff. 